that's a, that's a 100% where I was going to go. Listen, these guys, Cheetah, Byrog, Habedin, uh, Audubon, and Aforza, definitely strong players. And they're strong players in their region, and some of them absolutely have actually shown up. But Isaris, these are the these are the experienced guys. They've been to land not once, not twice, but a number of times, and they've they've performed not just getting swept. They've won a couple of games on the international stage. They've been to Sweden. They've been to America. Obviously, performing in their own region as well. These guys have come around. These guys have done this before, and so I think that they're a little bit like you said, reeled in is the term that I want to use for Valorous. They need to reel themselves in, calm down, and stop just. Out, all out brawling and I think that they can be successful. Yeah, I think if they're going to continue with this high progression playstyle, and maybe that's what they should do, maybe that's just what they are as players, then they need to draft something that's more fitting to it. They can't pick a Geb, you know, they have to pick something sure. that can really just keep slapping and keep going for the invade, keep the pressure up. Uh, and, and that's what I'd like to see, you know, either reel it in or go for a full pressure and play like they just played then. So let's say they commit as Serket is the first band for Isaurus. If they commit to being that high progressive team, what direction would you like to see these picks and bands go in? Uh, I think they should uh, definitely change up the support. You can't go for a Geb if you're going to be that aggressive. You can't really help his team out, you know, he's just watching his team go in and die and he's not really contributing. So something more aggressive like a Bacchus or a Sobek that can constantly be there and set up and, and something with uh, easy follow-up, you know, a pressure mid like Zeus or Isa, something that can really just continually do damage. I think that's the core that they should focus on. And that's something that Isaurus had as well, because you had Smithero on the bots who was actually able to just follow up consistently with the rest of his team. Bots doesn't necessarily have the greatest early aggression, but the counter engage is really where he can snowball ahead early on, and that's what he helped his team to do every single time that Valor should, kept trying to overcommit. Yeah, there's nothing really quite as scary as a bat who gets ahead, and he, the thing is, he's not really a pressure character, but we see over and over that he manages to um, to get ahead of the opposition, and I think that's due to the team comp, and if they try that again, then I'd love to see them build around it. Sir Ket, Chonga, Kabraken, three of the four bans. Kernanos will be the fourth from Isurus. Despite the fact that they won, they still ban out Kernanos as a hunter player yourself. Did you see something that really might have bothered you if you were Isurus? Where does this ban come from? Uh, it might be Fraga saying that, you know, Forza, you know, even though he was unchecked with aggression, that it was kind of a problem. And if he didn't get shut down, then it could have really run the lane. Maybe that's the case. Or it could be that they weren't willing to first pick it, but they didn't want to give it up either. And, they, you know, they found out last time the Valus uh, rates it really highly. So mm. maybe that's just, you know, they've got a free ban. Let's get rid of it so we don't have to deal with it. I'm leaning more towards that method especially, considering that they opted for the Zeus immediately rather than banning it out. Considering that they had first pick this go around, it makes it so much easier for them to just lock in that massive AOE control. But Valor is having Fafnir and Scotty. Yeah. This is nerfed Scotty, however. It's not like previous weekends before where we saw we were playing on the post <laughs> or the pre Scotty nerf. But now that she's been nerfed, I, I think that it's still interesting to see how it's going to play out in a team composition. How big of a deal is the Scotty change out of Rex here? It's uh it's gonna be so for the lane, it's you know non existent, doesn't exactly. matter. She's still gonna run it, she's still probably the best ADC for pressure, especially with Fafnir, you know, the damage they'll do for Done is out, you know, outlandish. But when it comes to team fights, that's where we'll really see the difference. You have to be so smart with how you use the ultimate because the dog will just die in seconds. You can't just stick it on the mage and then run away as you used to be able to. <laughs> and with her team fight being nerfed so much, you know, that's that's the that's going to be the divide at this LAN as to whether she's picked or not because of that team fight impact because it's dramatically less. Well, right here in game number two, we'll see. She'll be coupled with Fafnir, as you said, which is a fantastic pairing for Scotty. And Osiris will be the likel, likely jungler of choice, or excuse me, solo laner of choice for Valorous. But Daylon will get his Sylvanas one more time. I think that's an important play. And Osiris banning out the Poseidon is very interesting. That's one of those where I think you just don't want to let the mid laner get comfortable, play the same god a number of times in a row. That could just be problematic. I think they're recognizing Valorous have gone for a very slap pressure. Had, you know, heavy all three characters right now are very good at fighting without their ultimates, and they can just keep right. uh, keep the pressure on. And I think Poseidon would add to that in that he's a you know he's a high clear mage and he can follow it pretty well on Fafnir. So I think that they're going to target mid laners who are pressure to me, you know, kind of reel it in so Humbats can get online again. And a lot of times Valorous was also trying to play off pretty heavily from their solo laner. So if they give Cheetah something that has all that early aggression, such as an Osiris, which we've seen have very dominant laning performances that helps him lead into that mid late game stage where he's just a giant target kind of slapping <laughs> and walking at you which can be incredibly problematic for a Zeus. 
Yeah, they're really thinking about this last ban. I think yeah. it's going to be another solo and it's something they're not wanting to deal with. Uh, you know, and I think that's a smart thing. I think that's definitely the, the choice to make here. Mm -hmm. All the other ADCs that are open right now are kind of low impact and it's only if they get farm that really matters. So I, I really hope they'd go for a second solo later ban. How do you really feel about a Rom here on the side of Isaris? I think Rom is you know, Rom is never bad. You can kind of <laughs> slot him into any team comp and you know, especially at LAN when the snipes are kind of easy to hit, it's uh it's pretty you know, pretty awesome. He goes well with Savannah, he's hive clear so they can take the jungle buffs and and, and he's gone, you know, you call it. That's uh <laughs> it's definitely it definitely reduces that late game pressure that Isaris could put out. Yeah, it's a very strong choice from Valor. As you said, he's plug and play. You can put him into virtually any team composition. Everybody's eyebrows just went up. Jean Kui gets banned out <laughs> versus Valorous. Uh, this is more of a, this is less about Jean Kui being super strong at the moment and more about Jean Kui just being one of those pocket picks uh, for Habodin. He does like the, the uh, tanky mid laner, so taking that away from him will be a nice choice. And Medusa will come up. Medusa and Scotty. Likely to see Dusa in the mid lane, but who knows? At that shots right there to Isaris' Hunter. They do not want to permit yeah. Fragger on the Medusa yet again. But this also kind of leads Valorous into needing to pick some kind of magical compensation. So I, I, I would lean more towards potentially an Amir or an Athena even. I, I know that these Latin teams, they like having the global presence from Athena to compensate around the map. But my con main concern is for Valorous would be their burst damage overall. Yeah, this is a really, I feel they've drafted themselves in a bit of a corner, you know, Kabraken's mm -hmm. gone, so okay, there is the Morrigan, but it's still a very low magical power comp, and if they if they itemize physical heavy, then they're going to be in trouble here, I think. Yeah, I think Fafnir Scotty came out, and that there was a plan of action, and then Osiris was just sort of, okay, we know that you can play Osiris, so <laughs> Cheetah, just do that, and then the second round of bands came out, and they were like, Let's take Medusa away from Fagger, I guess. Uh, where are we at? So I think Fowler is a little bit on their heads. Taco, what do you think takes it? I like Isaris' draft here a lot more. Yeah, I feel if Isaris really draft in and they build the physical defenses, you know, Zeus picks up Dynasty Blade Ham and all that stuff, then they should really be able to walk away with this game. I think that this one is certainly leaning towards the left side. We could be seeing the second win for Isaurus, or Fowler might tie it up. Taco and Agro on the call. This is Tolly. But you Hi, know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it anyways. Anatoly, Taco here. Taco, <laughs> I, you do have the, you do, you got your stand. I got ready my Taco go. stand. That's exactly. Right. You're That's on right. the Taco I'm trying stand. to catch up. Either way, Asuras definitely looking to go up two to zero in this best of five set. And, and the big thing for me, Tolly, as they mentioned on the desk, not only the fact that Asuras can just stack physical protection against Valor's lineup, but Zeus. Isaris yes. has Zeus, and it's specifically Nozix has Zeus. And it's in conjunction with Daylon Sylvanas yet again. That's going to be a lot of control. You have the Suns from the Hu Yi. I love the area of control from Isaris' game and the Hunbats. But the Hunbats, I think, is what sparked the Morgan pick coming out of Valorous, mm. wanting to grab that Fear No Evil for themselves. They have a decent amount of control with the Fafnir ultimate. And if Morgan decides to go into any one of those four gods that have that huge AoE ultimate from Isaris. That's a great Great point, actually, that Fear No Evil going to be working against both sides, basically. But for me, it's a 3v3 going to be tough. Nozick's going to hit that chain lightning in mid, but Cheetah's coming around the back. It's going to be Nozick who's going to be the first to fall. Smatero is going to pick up Byrock, but Cheetah picks up an early double kill for that rotation around the back side. Valorous takes the 2-1 to one lead in kills before minions spawn. So remember how I said Cheetah had the best possible situation last game on the Vamana? I believe you did. I think this is this tops this time around because not only did he get two early kills, he got it on an Osiris, one of the most aggressive early game gods that you can possibly draft in all of Smite. Having the low cooldown sickles, trying to spam that away, as well as his second ability that just slows the enemy boosting his own movement speed, and that's going to be very problematic for Beltway. And you know Beltway just sitting in lane like, Ugh, come on, guys. He just gave two kills away to Osiris. Now I just have to sit under my tower the whole game. Smatero is going to have to come over and help him out with those buffs on the right-hand side. But Valorous certainly looking to get off to a better mid-game. They got off to an early start last game, like you mentioned, but didn't translate very well once the 3v3 fights in mid started happening. Valors are going to need to lean on the solo jungle side. You give the two kills to your soul laner, sit in that lane. Don't alleviate any pressure, especially against the Nike that's revolving their strategy around getting to that late game, trying to get all three stacks of those passives. That's true, but once Nike hits level 5, she is one of the harder solo laners to kill, even for Byrock on this Morrigan. But 
but you could see a, a stun into the transformation into Hunbats for the Fear No Evil. There is plenty of lockdown to try and make sure Nike doesn't get that ultimate off. Although I agree with you that it is going to be very difficult to kill Beltway on the Nike, you don't necessarily have to confirm the kill. You just have to get her out of the lane so that way she's low enough to the point where she can't really rotate from her tower towards those jungle side buffs. And that gold that you get from stealing that away from Isaris is just going to skyrocket Valorous into not only that gold lead, but that important experience gap. Getting to level 9 here for all these players out of Valorous is going to transition them better in the mid game. Forza and Adderban hanging out on this left side, trying to keep the pressure on to the enemy duo lane. You heard Ataraxia say on the desk that despite Scotty taking some nerfs recently, namely the big one to her ultimate, Caldier no longer completely immune whenever that ultimate goes off, just a full heal up to up to full health. Scotty's still as good as it gets in terms of lane control in the, in the early game. And it's still a doge that's going to be running at you full speed trying to get that damage. And that damage is very respectable. The dash is going to get that first hit. And that's the difference of towards winning a boxing engagement between the hunters or losing it. Without a doubt. Fragger playing this Hu Yi. This is a character we've seen a lot more of recently, Tolly. Why did Hu Yi kind of drop out of the meta, and why are we seeing more of him now? It's not necessarily that Hu Yi has ever dropped out of the meta, it's just more other hunters have gotten back into the mix of things. We're seeing more ROMs to deal with the Scotties. You know, Scotty just basically came out of nowhere. We haven't really seen too many unorthodox picks in terms of a Moose and Cobb or Artemis, but that has been experimented by other hunters. Oh, there's the transformation from Byrock, but doesn't get the Fear No Evil off before Smitero jumps away. The idea was there for Valorous. The execution was not. Not quite available. And playing on a land setting, it's very easy to adjust your reaction time to be able to jump away or to purification away from that Fear No Evil. So Smitero, he recognizes his own kit. He knows that once that jump happened from Byrock, he's like, okay, here comes the Fear No Evil. I have plenty of time to jump away. And he's got his jump of his own, exactly. Though it is one of those weird moments where you're like, hey, that's me. What am I doing? Jumping on me. But Smitero has the presence of mind to jump away in time. Not only was that changeling used, but the petrify from Hadobin as well, trying to double down onto the enemy jungler. So both of those ultimates on cooldown for the time being. And with buffs due to respawn shortly, this could be an opportunity for Asuras to invade. Absolutely, or at least to not get invaded on because Valorous does have that advantage in the soul lane. Just now finishing off the Warrior Tabby is Nike before us. So getting jumped on, nice stun. Feeds being used to avoid the suns. Trying to chase down Fraggers though, taking a lot of damage from the dog. I don't think Forza has enough to use his ultimate. Just trying to juke it out, waiting for some mana regen, but never gets it. Fragger finds the solo kill on the left hand side side and evens up Isaurus and Valorous 2-2. Two two. And that's a huge advantage out of Fragger. This is the same point where he got that lead in the early game when he was the Medusa 1v2ing against the Kernanos. There was just no real advantage for Forza just getting constantly taken advantage of. Oh, Cheetah uses that Lord of the Afterlife to jump away. Smatero follows him, but a good stun on a Byrock prevents that Fear No Evil from coming out until he's able to get it off that time around. Byrock trying to get away, but the overhead smash will prevent it. Nazik cleans up Hadobin in that mid lane. Beltway still wants his kill on the Cheetah. Needs the third hit of Rend, but decides to turn around and run with Adderban coming through the wings. A little bit of a disconnect from Beltway and Smitero. Not wanting to commit under that tier 1 tower, despite Cheetah having no mana. It's an Osiris with his passive fully stacked. That ethereal form with that 8 stacks, that 16% damage mitigation on the physical side of things. 8% magical now. But in the meantime, though, Adobin did take a spill in the mid lane. Nasex getting credit with that kill. The Lightning Storm was used, as was Wrath of Terra, so Hadobin never even got a chance to use his Purification Beads, it looks like. Definite, uh, definite lead for Nozix in that mid lane now, who's up a level and has that kill underneath his belt, despite falling to first blood from Cheetah earlier on. I love what Fragger's doing here. He has the one level advantage. He's got lane control. And with the mobility that he has with the Warrior Tabby, he's relying on putting a lot of pressure onto Forza Scotty, even stealing away the purple buff, giving him that two level lead. And again, look at the ward coverage from Asuras on this left hand side. That C they, they have consistently been out warding Valorous, and that's what's allowing Fragger to play so aggressive in this lane. Adderban made the rotation to try and relieve some pressure onto his hunter, but Forza still only has boots one. De indefinite 
trouble anytime Fragger wants to play aggressive. And anytime the support needs to make this rotation just to alleviate that pressure that the enemy hunter is doing onto you, sure, you can stop the pressure, but now you're sharing a wave, so you're not really getting any sort of stability. You're taking a net loss in the experience department, which is still skyrocketing Fragger in a good spot. Fragger is waiting to play aggressive. You can just tell how much he wants to go in, but Forza does have uh, does have that ultimate and enough mana to use it this time around. Could have uh, that definitely could have gone the other way if Forza had enough mana, but good recognition from Fragger on that solo kill opportunity. Byrock looping around the bottom left. Smitero jumps over Byrock, narrowly avoiding a lot of the autos out of Nozix, who's just throwing them into the into the dark to try and find them. I mean, he had the right general pathing, right? He knew that he wasn't going to go down the mid lane, but hold that thought in the dual lane, forcing out the beats out of Forza every single time, still holding on to that ultimate, surprisingly enough. You know, with a sustain from that health chalice from Fragger, he's willing to always take these engagements, taking advantage of this chalice. And not only does he get the purification beads, but those suns clear the way instantaneously as well so it's not like he's losing a whole lot for playing aggressive up against Forza who didn't even get stunned out usually you'll see the hunters wait until they get hit with that ricochet stun to use the purification beads up against the Hu Yi but Forza definitely on a little bit of an edge after uh, after being dominated by Fragger early on in this set. Trying to find any sort of advantage that Fragger can. They had the advantage in the soul lane for Valorous, but with those two kills, the Osiris is actually one level behind Beltway. Beltway with only one assist. It doesn't seem that the Osiris was really able to capitalize with any sort of farming potential, whether or not it was getting the Elementals, the right side mid harpies, or any single buff invade. Usually Osiris is with that sort of lead can even go to the enemy back harpies. You know, just try and steal those away. But as you mentioned, Cheetah seems to have been content to just stay in lane and play it safe. But with the lead that he got early on, I don't, I don't know if that was necessarily the call. No, not quite yet. In the dual lane, though, the jungle side control from Valorous, though, they have a little bit of vision aggressively, which will spot out these rotations, but Smitero, he's jumping onto Forza, trying to do the damage. There is a Fear No Evil, but Forza does get his ultimate off in time. Byrock throws out a Fear No Evil of his own and jumps to Smitero. Forza, the one able to clean up that kill. Cheetah's teleported into this left side and gets the purification beads out from Fragger. This opens up the Gold Fury opportunity. Adderban already starting it up, could transform into that dragon and give that AoE coerce. Beldway still in the soul lane. He could look for a teleport of his own. Gold Fury is sitting at about half health. Dalen trying to get in position for that Wrath of Terra. Five members peel off of the Gold Fury. Hits three with that Wrath of Terra. Dalen a little bit separated but as the teleport comes in from Beltway. Nozix being dove by Cheetah, but it's Nozix with the level lead. There's the Lightning Storm and it gets great value on the back. Fragger able to pick up one. Nozix does clean up one with the detonate before Cheetah knocks him down. Double kill for Fragger, and it's only Cheetah left to try and get away from Beltway and Smitero, who has respawned. Getting back into it, they found four. Can they get the DSI, the tether? Going to buy a little bit of time as Smitero has to disconnect them with that passive, taking a lot of damage mitigation, trying to get under the safety of his own tower, but taking the long way. Smitero almost with that Fear No Evil. I don't even think he's going to need it totally. Cheetah just getting as much farm as he can before he inevitably falls here. Beltway is going to be the one to get credit for it. 2-0 and 4 now. Definitely making worth of that uh, that teleport on the left. Unofficial Diaz side. You know, the rotation from Cheetah was good enough to force the purification beads out of Fragger, but it was a little premature of a rotation. You're a level 9 Osiris dealing with a level 10 and 11 Nike. You're losing the farm department anyway. Your team's trying to make the plays, but you're better off trying to get the levels. And this is the, co the wombo combo that we were talking about before the game started, you know, the Zeus, Sylvanas, Hu Yi, they were able to get off all that AoE damage as the rest of Valorous just grouped up too tightly around that right side mid harpy. I love that team fight from Nozix there, totally. He's running away from Cheetah and Osiris is one of the best characters at just ruining Zeus, so you can't get away from him. He, he, no way to do so outside of buying an early wing blade, and it looks like Nozix isn't going for it. But he turns around, takes two steps forward, drops the Lightning Storm, and then peels Cheetah away from the rest of the team fight. He knows he's going to be able to do damage from all the way down by his back harpies, basically, with that detonate. 
but it's about keeping Cheetah out of the fight and allowing Fragger to basically have free reign, and it's working out thus far. He's 3-0 and 2, and has already finished off the Transcendence. Nasex basically set up a bomb, a holdout thought. Dual lane beats have been exchanged. Forza, though, getting the better end of the Daylon has to make the rotation for the sustain, but like we were talking about before with Nasex, he was able to throw out that remote control bomb and then detonate it from running away, but Daylon wrapping around underneath, not really wanting to commit with that Wrath of Terra. Good meditation from Adderban, I think, is the reason we see no Wrath of Terra there from Daylon. Just making sure that Forza's healthy enough. Sylvanas could do a lot of damage early on, especially with that dot from Wrath of Terra and the Wisps, but not, you know, half health from Forza. So getting out that meditation, though it is basically for nothing, Daylon didn't end up committing the ultimate. So another win goes the way of Asuras. You know, Fragger did force out the beads there, trying to avoid the slow from the Suns. And if you do have the rotation coming out of Daylon Sylvanas, you know, the knock up into the root, into the pull after trying to get away, that's a lot of damage that Fragger can easily look for the setup. Valorous looked like they're going to be able to secure this portal demon. Daylon knows it's happening now, as does Beltway, but it still goes the way of Valorous. Byrock transforms into Hunbats and uses that Fear No Evil to get him out of danger. Adderban on the run as well, as Matero teleports to him in the mid lane. Trying to find the kill onto the Guardian. Fear No Evil being used after the transformation has been complete. Nazex detonating the bomb yet again. But look at this, Gold Fury is up. And with Byrock having to go back to base, Narbon is dead. Still having the Zeus ultimate. This is looking really good for Isaris. And Hadovin doesn't have that Petrify. He used it to secure the Portal Demon. Another Gold Fury goes Isaris's way. The first one of this game, but not the first one of the set. Forza, no beads, pulled in. Daylon making it happen once again for Isaris. Fragger the one who looks good at the end, but it's once again set up by the support Daylon. The clutch pulls from Daylon, finding Byrock the first game around the Gold Fury, finding Forza around that purple button. Up. This is the kind of setup you really can capitalize on. Your MVP support, Isurus, doing a great job securing the goal for you, securing the kill. The dual lane from Isurus has been the real difference maker. I think a lot of viewers at home looking at this set, myself included even, looks at this roster for Isurus and says, okay, well, let's see what Nozix can do in this matchup. But really, it has been the dual lane and Smitero who's, who have looked very, very strong so far against Valorous. And in order for a team to be successful in Smite, you can't just have one lane be the determining factor. Every single cognitive gear has to be turning and spinning at the right rate. And this is something that Valorous just ha hasn't been able to capitalize on. They get the lead in the soul lane with those two early kills, but then they shift their attention away from that and then they just eventually start slowly trickling down. I do like that play though from Valorous where they just uh, concede the left side tier one and instead group up and push down both towers on the right hand side that gets them 2,000 gold gets them a little bit closer to Isaurus who was not able to secure the enemy tier 2 tower on the du on the dual lane side so heads up play there from Valorous still uh Still showing some some life in this game, now only down under 2,000 gold. It's an important fact to take advantage of because looking at the composition from Isaurus with all these combinations of ultimates, the sustain from Daylon, you don't want to take a 5-on-5 five -five full fight. You want to play kind of like Guerrilla Warfare style, stunning out Nasix in mid lane, backing off, going for some poke, you know, forcing out the ultimate even out of Daylon, and then resetting from there. This is the one advantage that Valorous can do with that uh, the stealth from Morgan. But Fragger is here and he knows exactly Exactly where Byrock is, that mark of the Golden Crow, helping make sure he knows exactly where the Morgan is going. Fragger cleans up the kill, but he's in trouble, forced into the Aegis. Vitero and the Lightning Storm on top. Nozix able to clean up one. Cheetah does find Fragger, giving him his first death of the game, and now Nozix is in a lot of trouble. Tether being used, Mini gets a lot of damage. Cheetah getting jumped on two for two thus far, but after this Osiris death, it's gonna be a three for two. Isra still within a huge advantage. Forced it though, caught in an awkward spot, using is that ice rink just to be able to amplify her movement speed gets out of dodge. But Valorous fights back. They're the ones who start that engagement and almost end up on top. They do end up falling three to two, as you mentioned, because of that AOE ultimate combination between Smitero, Nozix, and Fragger. But Another good fight from Valorous. Looks like they're starting to, to get online a little bit. And imagine had Isaurus had Wrath of Terror for that left side mid-harpy engagement yeah. instead of forcing it in the mid lane. Valorous would have been 
they're counting their lucky stars right now because that could have easily been a deicide in the in Isers' favor. So as long as Valus can continue grouping up around the jungle, playing off of their sentry wards, looking for some sort of picks or advantage, you know, forcing a relic here, forcing an ultimate there. This is the style that Valorous can use to get back into the game. And Valorous has a great late game composition. They've got two hunters with a Fafnir and a Morgan who can transform into anybody. They could have three hunters. They could have two Fafnirs. They could have tons of chorus buffs for the entire team. Tons of CC. Really, really strong late game. Just a matter of getting there thus far. And Fragger is going to be the problem they have to go through. Level 16 for the Hunter. He's the top level in the game, tied with his own solo laner, Beltway. And that fight went Valorous's way, at least in part, because of how early Fragger fell. Trying to find something on the right side of the map. Portal Demon is about to respawn, heading into the 17 minute mark. Not too much of a lead compared to the last game, whereas Isaris was really dominating with their invades after the fact, but this time a much slower paced game, partly due to the fact that Valors was able to get those two towers on the right, just making sure that they don't fall too far behind. Isaris, they're the one setting up for the Portal Demon this time around. Cheetah's 5, 2, and 1, and he got that early double kill in mid, and then fell behind Beltway a little bit. Has had some troubles in the lane, but his team fighting seems to be pretty solid, Tolly. That, that last fight in particular, he was huge, instrumental in finding the kills onto both Nozix and Fragger. His goal is just to get Nozix out of this team fight. He has the Thorns as his second relic, being able to just stick on the Zeus. As long as he tethers multiple targets, he's going to be taking basically little to no damage, especially if he does have that passive stacked up. So the whole goal is from Cheetah on the Osiris is to get the Zeus player out of the way, not trying to use that Lightning Storm offensively. If if the Osiris can just use if, to bait the Zeus out, to use that ultimate on himself for Peel, that's a huge win for the Soul Laner. Without a doubt, Byrock on this Morgan, sitting at level level 14, 1-4-4, one, four, and four, but has had some success in using that Changeling ultimate. Also been using the stealth aggressively just like this, set up some easy damage onto Smitero, but no real follow-up from the rest of the team afterwards. This, uh, this Morgan pick could just become stronger and stronger. It is going to become stronger and stronger as the game goes on because he's using the items that the other team is earning for themselves. Here he comes around the backside, finds two with that stun, but immediately answered by a Fear No Evil. Again, diving in the back line, the tier one tower, taking a tower shot, still running away. Byrock does the setup, but trying to find it is Autobahn, but he overcommits. Nazex using that Lightning Storm to clean that one up. Hadobin very low, he's gonna dash away. Byrock uses the Aegis, waiting for that overhand smash, but Smitero instead just blinks forward and hits him with the auto attack. Beltway finds Hadobin in that mid lane. Cheetah has to use the Lord of the Afterlife to get away, but I don't know if he even created enough space. Forza does find the kill on the Smitero, so Valorous get at least one in this engagement, but that overcommit from Adderban underneath that tier one tower in mid was not the right play there for Valorous. Similar story compared to the first game when everybody from Valorous tried to go on to Daylon, this time around over committing under the tier one tower. You know, forcing the issue is nice here and there, but you can't do it whenever you don't have a clear cut advantage. If you're able to get something in return, like you poke them out, go for gold here. You poke them out, you go for portal demon. But Isaris, they win the team fight, they're going for both. I love this play from Isaris, splitting the map. They have two objectives they could possibly go for. Which one do you want to go for? Why not? Why only one? Why not both? Say Isaris. They get the Portal Demon. They get the Gold Fury as well. Fragger has enough life steal that Aussie alone is enough to make sure that he can solo that Gold Fury comfortably. Sitting at level 18 now with that Executioner as well. Really, really strong objective play from Isaris. I love the fact that Fragger is now going for the more traditional new style that hunters have been employing in their builds, which is that Fatalis. You know, the extra 10 penetration is why a lot of these hunters elected to go for this item, but not really deterred from that fragger instead going for a huge burst potential going to go for this chin size here after that executioner and this is going to increase his damage spike extra especially with that mark of the golden crow exactly the chunk potential out of who Yi. one of the reasons he's so strong ricochet as well we saw emilito basically win a game for energy off of one ricochet near the gold fury pit so always has that game changing potential particularly in the early to mid game 
As Surrets has enough of a lead that they feel comfortable pulling this gold, this fire giant up about 5,000 gold. And look at how far zoned away Valorous is. Beltway keeping four members busy. The lightning storm comes out, and there's no way Valorous gets in in time to defend it. They do not. Isaris get away the fire giant without any contest. Autobahn trying to zone out with that draconic form, but Beltway doing the same on the back, forcing out Forza and Adobin. Daylon trying to maybe find a pull, but it's Otterbond that's caught in a, between a rock and a hard place. Petrify comes out, hits three there from Adobin. Big Lord of the Afterlife hits three as well, and Byrox here with his transformation, Fear No Evil. Nozix finds the detonate though, and that's gonna spell trouble for the jungler and the support. Fragger notches number six as the hunter. Cheetah, he's gonna fall. Smite Taro finds his fifth of the game. Forza just pulled back in. Daylon once more showing off, and all of Asuras just tearing through Valorous. And that's going to be a deicide. Isurus, they get the fire giant. They find all five members. They're going to be able to easily clean up this right side Phoenix. The question is, how frisky are they truly feeling? Are they going to go for the end here? There's eight seconds on Otterbond. And without an ultimate for the Fafnir, it's not going to be easy holding on to your Titan. It looks like they're going directly for the Titan because Nozix's ultimate just came off cooldown. Adderban's going to do what he can, but it's not going to be a lot. Smitero finds the next D aside their beltway is gonna dance in the enemy fountain and Asuris finds a decisive game number two. They are one win away from moving on here at Smite Masters. Strong performance from Isaris thus far. You know, both games, they got the slight disadvantage both in the solo lane, but they're able to bounce back off of the over-aggression from Valorous. We've talked about everyone on Asuris a, a ton, really outside of Beltway, and I think that he deserves a lot of credit for taking two early losses in those laning phases. First on the Bologna, that one mostly his fault because he takes two deaths in lane. But then that game, Cheetah gets a double kill in mid through no fault of Beltways, and he's able to outfarm Cheetah by what, the, the eight to 10 minute mark? I mean, that's ridiculous. Especially like the fact that Osiris wasn't able to extend their lead. You're just yeah. basically asking, like why even pick Osiris at that point if you're not gonna rely on invading in the soul lane with that early lead of an advantage? Sure, but Cheetah did have a good team fight there in the mid stages of the game, even after he had fallen a little bit behind of Beltway. Basically, the story is that all of Asuras is playing at a very high level right now, and Valorous have to find an answer, whether it be in their own play or the draft, to try and turn it around and win three in a row to move on here. Luckily for them, they've got a desk they could listen to to give them some advice, tell them how they lost game two and what they could do in game three. Tom's at the lead. Thanks a lot, Taco. I doubled down just like Valorous did. <laughs> Valorous had a lot of trouble in game number one being over aggressive. And here they doubled down and they were over aggressive here in game number two. And it worked out for the first 15 seconds. But that's about it. Afterwards, it kind of went in the other direction. They had two kills in the first minute, like I said, before the minions even spawned, and they were only able to get six for the rest of the game. And it just spelled out, that it was almost a replay of game number one, where they get the initial two kill early lead again onto their solo laner, Cheetah, who had such a phenomenal potential to just jump completely ahead of his opposition. But unfortunately enough, he actually ended up falling behind, and a lot of that due to the fact that he was just trying to make those early rotations happen, but they were just ineffective. It has to be quite demoralizing, really, to have, um, you know, he's had such a big lead in both games, and you've got the Osiris, you've got the, the winning matchup, and and you just get behind a Nike, and yeah. it's, it's it's really rough, and he needs to shake that off going into game three. Yeah, it was, it was pretty impressive. What was it? A 3 0 and 8 for the Nike there uh, towards the end. Just a fantastic performance by Beltway to dig himself out of that hole since Cheetah had the early, early lead. But this one, did you watch game number one? Because this kind of was a repeat. Fragger just being Fragger. And I, I still just can't believe how fin how well Fragger is just getting ahead of Forza every single time in this duo lane. He just jumps completely ahead of the competition. His farm has just been phenomenal. He picks up the early solo kills as well, which as a Hu Yi, that's probably one of the best positions you can be in. Yeah, it's one of the main reasons to pick him really is to complete mm -hmm. lane dominance. And I think in both games now, Fragger has picked after Forza has, and he's had favorable matchups, or he's made them a favorable matchup, even if they're not meant to be, and he's made it work. And I think maybe, Maybe they, you know, Forza should hold his pick a little bit, talk to his team, see if he can hold it, and maybe get the the good matchup on uh, on Fragger. Because if they want to win a game, I think Forza needs to really shut him down and, and get that return solo kill. You know, he's been solo twice now, and he needs to step up and and return it. It's the positioning, really, what what spells it out for me as far as Fragger is concerned. His positioning has just been 
aggressive when he needs it to be, but also recognizing that there is potential for enemies to be in the jungle. He has the ward coverage, and he just knows when to back off as well. And I think that's where Forza is really struggling, is that he's not Ooh. playing it the same way. He likes to just be as aggressive as possible, and you can't afford to do that into a composition such as what Isaris is running. That right there is just like the Medusa play that I mentioned last time around. Just fantastic target, aqu target acquisition, understanding what player he needs to be on, and then jumping over that wall right there, just understanding the big picture of the team fight. I, I kind of see a lot of what your style is in what he's doing. Well, uh, considering he's playing so well, I'm going to take that as a huge compliment. Hopefully uh, I can play as well as he does. <laughs> um, but I think the, the big thing I noticed as well is the synergy with the jungler is really, I feel like Forza is not playing with this jungler, you know? They're, mm. they're not really aware of where they are and they're not playing off the enemy position. And I think Fragger is, you know, the second Forza steps out of position, there's a monkey behind him, he's ulting yeah. him and he's dead. <laughs> and, and I think that speaks to the comms and, and, and how good they are as a unit, you know? Yeah, it's my